Good evening. I'm the director, Joni Bijan. <laughs> and uh, let me tell you something. When I'm not driving around my sports car or saving small animals, I've been directing this play for a long time, and I'm very proud of these young kids. I am hey! definitely killing Hey, what did I what? tell you? What? Stop trying to make my speeches! Hey, it's you called acting. It's called acting. Get out! Out of here! Hold up, hold out. up. Out! No! Go! Yes, go, stage beast! Go! Yes, sir. Yes. Take this room! Thank Take this room! Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I am the actual director, and welcome to Southport High School's 2010 production of Fly, a tale from the House of Frankenstein. Now, there are a few things as an audience that I have to inform you. One is that there is no flash photography, please, and please turn off your cell phones at this time. Hello? Hey, hey, turn your cell phone off. Stage beast! No! Do not ruin my intro! I will deal with you at intermission. You're an idiot. Anywho, the front row, all the, you guys there, there's a chance that silverware knives and forks may fly at you. Just so you know, it's, it's a little thing. There's a petition over there that helps save the drama program as well as music and the arts. <laughs> so at intermission or after the show, would you please sign it? Because without that, this may very well be the last spring play that the school produces. <laughs> so on that rather depressing note, I'll let you enjoy the show. Good night. We began the lecture series, Scholars with the Origin of Life, with conception, gestation, and birth, the emergence of a human being from the darkness. Today, we look on death. I hear whispering, scholars, and I sense apprehension in the air. Would someone care to articulate the reason for your lack of focus? Well, Madam, she... The other examples have been... I believe what you're trying to say is that she does not seem as dead as the other example that you have seen. Yes, I grant you, she retains about her a sense of the beauty that must have been hers. Her skin does not appear ravaged by disease, nor are there any mortal injuries apparent, and yet her skin is cold. The light of life is absent from her eyes, and no breath stirs from her lungs, and it is for just such reasons that I have brought her to you. Her history is very simple to explain, though not to understand. This poor child took ill two nights ago, no cause that could be determined. She apparently suddenly felt faint and was comatose within the hour, asleep from which she would never awaken. <laughs> she died, scholars, and I cannot tell you why. It is beyond our understanding. Death comes to us all, you see. Whether in our old age or in the flower of our youth, suddenly and without warning. We could not save this poor child one day one of you might have that knowledge. This is our great task, to remove and prevent the misery of illness, to repair the damage of time, and to hold off the darkness for as long as we are able. I hope in your continued studies you will learn what is, is needed and what, at the risk of sounding less than scientific, I choose to refer to our sacred task as physicians. Are there any questions before we dismiss? Sir, I'm sorry. I in told regards... you not to do that. <laughs> In regards to the lecture series, there's a rumor circulating about the patron who financed it. As has been said before, the patron has chosen to remain anonymous. The university is grateful for the support and for the opportunity to bring the finest medical minds from throughout Europe here to Ingolstadt. You should concern yourself with your studies, Mr. Buckner, and not with these rumors. Professor, I, I meant no disrespect, but it is well known that the House of Frankenstein supplied the capital for the expenses. As I just stated. And, and when you consider the rumors associated with the name Frankenstein. How dare you broach that subject? I warn you, Mr. Buckner. This institution will not continue to tolerate these flights of fancy. We study medicine here, not black magic and fairy lore. And these ideas. Professor, please. Everyone has heard the Victor Frankenstein attempt to create life, and it is more than a few that believe it was his creation that hastened his death at such a young age. Why else would the family suppress the notes and journals of after his death? And now the name Frankenstein is associated with an 
in-depth study of life and death of all things around us. Surely this is no coincidence. And what else would it be? Herr Frankenstein. Gentlemen, may I present Herr Wilhelm Frankenstein. Oh, of course, how silly of me. Surely my interests cannot be merely academic. I must be using this series as a ruse to gather medical information from all over Europe. And now that I have it, well, of course, I will use it for my diabolical plot to raise an army of living dead and conquer the world. <laughs> really, gentlemen, I thought you were men of science. Have there been tragedies in my family's past? Of course. What family has not had such occurrences somewhere in its history? But I find this sort of fairy tale gossip to be really beneath you all. Do you not agree? I yes. echo your sentiments, Herr Frankenstein. Life offers enough mysteries for our study without any embellishment. Mr. Bruckner, I will see you in my office this afternoon. Is that understood? <sighs> Dismissed. It is unwise to sneak up on someone in a room containing a corpse. You might frighten someone to death. It is rare someone is so public in their assertions concerning my uncle. It takes either a brave man or a fool to risk that censure in the eyes of his peers. Which are you? At, at Frankenstein, I meant no disrespect earlier. Ah, an apology. Perhaps that answers my question. I meant no disrespect to your uncle, sir. In fact, quite the opposite. I applaud his willingness to go above the conservative notion that is promulgated in this institution. As I said earlier, I don't believe a word of what you said earlier. Or rather, I believe there is rather more truth in your sarcastic response than you wish to admit. I believe you are continuing your uncle's research, although I'm unsure of the motive. Why this interest in my uncle's supposed studies? If, as I believe, Victor Frankenstein succeeded in creating life, then I believe his methods could be improved upon to preserving the life in which we are all born. This is the goal I believe he missed in his quest merely to create life or recreate life to be more accurate. Yet, if the stories are true, as you claim, then all of his actions ended in tragedy, a tragedy no one would wish to repeat. Of, of course, but what if his methods could be improved upon? And how would you do that? Let me help you with your research, and I'll tell you. <laughs> Mr. Bruckner, I like your utter gall, but may I remind you again, I am not in the midst of any experiments. Good day. Oh, and good luck with your meeting with the professor. The raw materials. The raw materials, they must be preserved. I beg your pardon? I, I theorize that your uncle may have obtained the raw materials. The, the corpses, from a variety of sources. Some, no doubt, were better in terms of freshness. I apologize for the, the crudity of this explanation. But you see, the process of decomposition has gone far, and the flaw cannot be corrected. It is ingrained in the organism. Unless, unless he did something to preserve them during the process. However, they would have continued to rot, unnoticeably, even as he worked. And your remedy? I know of a lake where the body of a drowned man will never reach the surface. Do you know why? Because the water is too cold to allow it to bloat. Of course! Cool temperatures, slow chemical reactions, preserving the flesh. I knew it. I knew it that there was more here than there seemed. And I have other ideas, Eric Frankenstein. Let me work with you. Together, we can solve the puzzle your uncle discovered. You do not know what you're asking, Link. I'm sorry, I cannot allow it. It would be sad if the local people were to hear of these new experiments. <laughs> A superstitious lot, based on the stories they tell. Surely that force an inquest and an examination of your properties? So you're not about blackmail, then? I could not go through with it. Ah, perhaps you can be trusted, then. Leave here at once and come to the estate immediately. Say little to others, but make certain no one will interfere with you while you work. Thank you, Aunt Frankenstein. You will not regret this. I already do. Let us pray that you do not come too as well. <laughs> <laughs>